California proposed a rule that would ban any purchases of non-zero emission locomotives after the year 2030. Starting 2024, all rail companies would pay into account annually based on their prior year emissions. After 2030, those same companies can use that money to purchase or lease new zero emission locomotives, or simply to repower their existing locomotives to become zero emissions, effectively making all locomotives in California electric or hydrogen powered in the near future. Now the rule would be changed because it was too burdensome. Too, too burdensome, I, w I wonder who said that. Now you would expect it to be our usual culprits, the class one freight railroads. You know, Union Pacific, BNSF. I mean, they do account for 95% of all locomotive emissions statewide. But no, it was Metrolink. Metrolink! Now, that's not to say that Union Pacific didn't complain, but Metrolink would be the final nail in the coffin. Their argument was due to the purchase of the EMD F125 Spirit locomotives, basically EMD's equivalent to the Siemens Charger, which Metrolink designed with EMD back in 2013 and got their complete order of 40 locomotives by 2021, that the switch to a 100% zero emissions fleet would be too financially devastating for the commuter railroad, an argument that's quite understandable, given that by 2030, they'd only had them for 15 years. Now, it still makes you wonder why Metrolink would design, build, and purchase tier 4 diesel locomotives, knowing that California high speed would fund the electrification of not one, not two, but three of their busiest rail lines. Four if you count the 91 Paris Valley line. All I'm saying is, if somebody would have taken the California High Speed Rail project a little bit more seriously, like say a Caltrain, they wouldn't be in this predicament. In the end, Metrolink would have the rule bent so that by 2030 only half of a railroad fleet should be tier 4 or cleaner. A pretty huge step back if you ask me. I like to point out that neither Amtrak, Amtrak California, Ace Rail, or Coaster publicly complained about these new regulations despite being in the same predicament with the new Siemens Chargers. And remember, all this isn't just for climate change, it's for better air quality. Too. In fact, it's the California Air Resource Board that proposed the rule. These regulations might seem aggressive to some, and I'm not gonna lie, when I first read it, it seemed aggressive to me too. But while I inhaled the equivalents of six cigarettes a day on the East Coast due to premature wildfires from Canada, yeah, let's just say I got the picture. The air quality in New York City today was the worst in the entire world. Even worse than Delhi, the Indian city which is known for its noxious air. They say being outside is like smoking three to 11 cigarettes a day. Wow. We make choices in a democracy. We choose what's important. Budgets are in fact expressions of our choices and our social values. Since California's already cleaned up its electric generating system, the biggest sector that contributes to carbon in other states, in our state, it's transportation. And we need to electrify the transportation system and high-speed rail is the backbone of that. Exit to the rear door. Doors open. TOD God says, wake up babe. New Banks Rail video just dropped. Let's get this out the way. Southern California, specifically the LA region, is not a healthy climate for high-speed rail. But before we get into why, let's go over some project details. Let's start with the Anaheim to LA Union Station section. A somewhat common misconception is that this section is a part of Phase 2. It's not. Phase 2 is actually over here. Instead, as some of you may know, this is a section of the Los San Corridor. This section is around 30 miles long and runs completely on Metrolink's Orange County Line, which is used by Metrolink, Amtrak, Union Pacific, and BNSF. Naturally, this corridor can get pretty busy. Because of this, a lot of infrastructure on the line will be upgraded, including station replacements, grade separations, electrification, and an increased top speed of 110 miles per hour. The California High Speed Rail Authority also expressed the need to separate passenger trains and freight trains as much as they can where possible. This means adding additional tracks. Unfortunately, the authority BNSF, found that the additional tracks wouldn't be enough, that a whole new intermodule facility outside of the project's boundaries would need to be built. See, that's the problem with this project. Some companies, authorities, and counties will openly present themselves as adversaries towards the project and then quietly pocket major infrastructure improvements from the authority that may or may not have anything to do with the project in the first place. While the authority reluctantly promises these improvements as a means to make them happy, the price for the overall high-speed rail project balloons. With that said, let's take a look at Los Angeles Union Station. Currently, the station is laid out as a terminus, with no through tracks and buffers at the southern end of the platforms, meaning all trains must approach from the north. Obviously, this is pretty limiting, for current services and future services alike. With this in mind, California High Speed Rail and Metro came up with a plan to turn the terminus into a through station. The project will be named Lincoln Union Station, 
As a part of the agreement between Metro and California High Speed Rail, California High Speed Rail would have to release $423,335,000 in Proposition 1A funding. This is a part of the authority's initial $500 million investment in Southern California infrastructure projects. The other $76.7 million went towards the Great Separation Project in Santa Fe Springs. The Great Separation Project is set to open in 2025, with the Link Union Station Project set to open in 2028. That makes two projects that are slated to open in 2028 but haven't began construction. Hmm, it's almost like they're setting slightly unrealistic goals in order to have it completed for some large event or something. Speaking of completed projects, LA's regional connector will be opening pretty soon. This is just an example of one of the many active LA metro rail expansion projects spearheaded by multiple measures such as Measure R and Measure M, undoubtedly created in response to California High Speed Rail in the 2028 Olympics. This Measure M, as I said, we went to the voters, we were very successful, 71.1% approval by LA County voters. That in my mind is a mandate. Yeah, I have a question. Oh, okay, please. How exactly are you going to fix our freeways? Ah uh, yes, the one more lane bro technique. In this case, it's actually two more lanes bro. Let's take a look at the LA to Burbank section. There's nothing really extraordinary to report here. The section will be electrified and upgraded to 110 miles per hour. There's already a pretty decent amount of grade separation on the section too. The most interesting part of this section is Burbank Station, which will be one of only two stations that are underground. It will be located directly underneath Burbank's replacement airline terminals, providing the first air to high speed rail connection in the United States. Oh! Not my words, the authorities. It's almost like they agree with the video that I made on... Nah. <laughs> Anyways, Metrolink will not share the underground station. Here's a short list of reasons I can think off the top of my head. Metrolink suffers from what I call Metro Syndrome, a condition where commuter railroads with extreme potential are criminally underfunded to the point where they don't set long-term improvement plans for themselves and continue to make short-sighted mistakes. Symptoms of Metro Syndrome include but are not limited to share track with freight, often to the point where the freight railroad owns most of the right-of-way, having the majority of the right-of-way be single-tracked, one-directional peak service, and no dedicated funding for future expansions and improvements. The latter can serve as a reason for why Metrolink has been so hesitant to work with the California High Speed Rail Authority. And yes, Metrolink has been expanding, but these expansions only serve to maintain ridership numbers. We could also see this happening with the LA Metro, whose expansions of their LRT and BRT systems have picked up in recent decades. Despite their massive expansions, they continue to lose ridership, which is uncommon around most of the world as system expansions open up the service to new potential riders. The only way that you can explain depleting ridership is that if A, rapid expansions from the Transportation Authority have led to minimal or zero improvements to service frequencies on existing routes due to their services being spread too thin, or B, self-sabotage. Both the LA Metro and Metrolink engage in the latter in some shape or form. Marketing out public transportation as a means to free up highways and roads essentially tells everybody that by building out more transit, you're going to make it easier for them to drive. This is most likely a latent function and not intended by either authority. But what is intended is the LA Metro's continuous investment investments in highway widening projects. All of these are indicators of an extremely car-centric local government. High Speed Rail cannot and will not survive in these counties unless the local governments don't change their mindsets. What I'm saying is, High Speed Rail is a tool, and just like all tools, the people need to know how to use it. It's up to local transportation authorities to demonstrate this. If local transportation authorities are confused about how to use their own tools, then High Speed Rail would be just as useful in the Central Valley as it would be here. I can go more in depth into the LA Metro and I need to sneeze. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm just gonna end it on that. So that's it for this video. 200 likes for the next part of this series. After what I had to put up with while recording this video, it would mean a lot. As always, if I earned your like and subscription, I love you. And if you made it this far in the video, stay safe. Jonathan Powell says, CEO Kelly said recently at the USHSR conference, about 13 minutes in, that the 2008 and 2009 dollars from the federal government were specifically for the Central Valley. The authority had asked to start in four different places, but that the Central Valley was where the Fed said it had to be spent. Winston Churchill says, I love Banks Rail. Tim M says, Banks Thanks rail? Nah, this is base rail. Three men say massive brain content BRU. Doors open.